Neurodiversity for Dummies. In this video, I'll be sharing a brand new book that came out earlier this year called Neurodiversity for Dummies. It's quite a comprehensive, not so little book, helping us understand not only what neurodiversity is, but also how to use that understanding in our everyday lives. When I first heard about this book, I was really excited about its potential. So I reached out to John and he sent me a copy, which is why I've got one in my hands at the moment. So very big thanks to John Marble for that. So it's exciting, it's colorful, it's literally in my hands. It's a little bit shiny, so I need to be careful with the camera and I'm looking forward to telling you more about it very soon. Hi everyone, Paul Mikalev here from Autism From The Inside. I make weekly videos sharing the human side of autism, so make sure you hit subscribe to get the latest content. Okay, so let's get stuck into it. I'll start by telling you a little bit about the book itself, um, who it's for, what you can expect to find in it. I'll give you a summary of what it's like overall. Then we can look at some examples of some of the contents and I'll finish with my overall thoughts of the book as a whole. So firstly, as you may have gathered from the name, Neurodiversity for Dummies is part of Wiley Publishing's For Dummies series, providing information in simple to understand language. This book was written by John Marble, Kushbu Chabria and Ranga Jayaraman, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing those names right. And as stated on the front cover, they are a neuro-inclusive team of experts committed to empowering individuals and families. Needless to say, I'd be quite skeptical of a book like this if it was not written by a neuro-inclusive team. So it's really nice to see that that was prioritized and that neuro-inclusive approach really shines through in the content of the book itself as well. So who's the book for? It's almost like a quick reference book rather than something you'd read cover to cover. So with that in mind, the content actually covers quite a broad range of relevant topics. There's a significant amount in there tailored directly to neurodivergent individuals, as well as to parents, carers, medical professionals, teachers, people in the workplace, and so on. Okay, so what's the book like overall? Well, firstly, it's quite basic as you would expect. You're not really gonna learn very much about any individual thing, but the really impressive thing is the breadth of what's covered. Even if you know a lot about one area, in my case, I already have a lot of experience with autism and ADHD, there are guaranteed to be parts that you're less familiar with. In my case, things like Tourette's, intellectual disability, cerebral palsy, that kind of thing. I really enjoyed the overall writing style. It's both simple and deep at the same time. It kind of cuts to the heart of what the question is actually trying to ask, which is a style that I really appreciate. The language is fairly neutral in general, and it seems to have a start by explaining the phenomena and don't forget about the strengths kind of approach. At the end of each chapter, there's also a section on myths and misconceptions, which is an excuse to speak directly to the unfortunately still quite prevalent beliefs that exist in society from people who don't know any better. There are also some really nice nuances like the concept of disability being good or bad or both sometimes. And there's an emphasis on recognizing strengths and challenges at the same time. So while there's not a lot of information on any one thing, I was quite impressed by some of the things that were included, such as a note on trauma in everyday life, tending to your spirit, being a part of self-care, and boundary setting, being a part of self-advocacy. So overall, the book is a really good all-rounder. We'll go into a little bit more detail in a minute, but essentially you can just flip it open to basically any random page and find something interesting and useful. And if nothing on that page gets your attention, just keep flicking until something catches your eye. Not everything is gonna be relevant for every person, but when you do hit on a question or a topic that interests you, you'll get a really nice, simple nugget of an explanation about something you weren't previously exposed to. And all from a neurodiversity affirming perspective that neurodiversity is a normal everyday part of life. You have a place, you're meant to be here, you're not a mistake, you're not an anomaly. All of our uniquely wired brains come together to contribute to the neurodiversity of our species. Okay, so that was a bit of an overview, but what about the structure of the content itself? What can you expect to find in this book? Well, like I said earlier, it's a bit of a reference book, which means there is an incredibly detailed contents page. It's very well structured with topics and questions. You can essentially just browse through the headings in the contents. And then when a topic or question catches your eye, you can flip to that page and get a nice little summary. It's about a 350 page book and the table of contents is 12 pages long with over 30 headings per page. So do the math on that. There's basically a mini title, a mini question that gets answered on every single page of the book. So I'll give you a random example. Um, okay, I'm just browsing through the contents page uh, and I find this one. 
Disruptions in routine, page 63. So if I flip to page 63 and it says disruptions in routine and there's literally two paragraphs. Disrupting routines can be jarring, especially if the autistic person is using them to organize their thoughts. Right, so tiny little nugget of information relevant to whatever you find in the contents page. In terms of the contents itself, there are six parts. Understanding neurodiversity, recognizing the types of neurodivergence, navigating life as a neurodivergent person, thriving as a neurodivergent person, empowering neurodistinct people, building a neuroinclusive world, and then a bit of a summary at the end. So as you can see, there's a bit in there for everyone. In terms of the types of neurodivergence covered, there is of course an entire chapter devoted to autism, a chapter on ADHD, one on dyslexia, dyscalculia, etc. And finally, one on associated conditions like Tourette's, OCD, bipolar, and things like that. I'm pretty sure the term ASD, autism spectrum disorder, is not actually mentioned at all in the book, which is kind of interesting. To give you a sense of how they do cover it, in the understanding autism section, it says, autism is a natural variation in how our brains work not a defect or a disease. There's also a really nice bit on understanding spectrum conditions, clearly busting the myth that it's a straight line from a little bit autistic on one end to a lot autistic on the other end. So clearly talking about autism makes up a big part of the book, but I really like the way that they've included other conditions as well. For example, can we consider something like bipolar to be a neurodivergence? The answer is that's actually not a particularly helpful question, and the book doesn't attempt to answer it either. Instead, let me quote to you from the bipolar section. Even without all the details, you can still use a neurodiversity approach to support those with bipolar by embracing their unique strengths, creating supportive spaces, and being adaptable to their changing energy and moods. Which means ultimately, the neurodiversity paradigm is not about who's in and who's out. It's about how can we use our understanding of neurodiversity to support people with unique brains, which is everyone. It's also interesting to note that they've used a mix of identity first language and person first language, sometimes saying autistic person, neurodivergent person, and sometimes saying someone with autism. I suspect that's because there's no universal consensus in the wider neurodiversity community as to if person first or identity first is a clear favorite. For example, do you say I have ADHD? A lot of people do. How many people say I'm an adhd -er? Some people do. What about dyslexia or OCD? It gets a little bit more complicated when the thing that you're trying to describe isn't necessarily a core part of your identity. Also, I mentioned earlier how I really like the myths and misconceptions part at the end of each chapter. So for example, the myths about associated conditions are people with intellectual disability can't learn. That's a myth. Everyone with Tourette's swears. Bipolar means manic or depressed. People with OCD are just neat freaks, right? So these are common stereotypes and misconceptions. Uh, and I think it's really great that at the end of every chapter, there is a really specific addressing of some of these common beliefs. So there's obviously way too much for me to share in a video, but these are just a couple of little nuggets that, that really spoke to me. For example, this part in the self-advocacy section, Here's a cool thing. Advocating for yourself means not just asking for what you need, but also being proud of who you are. So it's about valuing your own experience and using it to find your way in the world. I kind of wish I had some more criticism um, about this book. The only criticism I could have, which sounds a bit ri ridiculous, is that there are some things it leaves out. And uh, the reason I say that's ridiculous is because the amount that it includes is huge. At the same time, immensely impressed at the breadth of what is included. And yet at the same time, there are some things that were not included, but it feels a little bit unfair to say, hey, you didn't talk about this thing when there are so many things that already have been talked about and they presumably had a finite number of pages that they had to stick to. So I guess overall, it's not an all-inclusive Bible that will have everything you possibly ever need to know about neurodiversity. It is a very, very solid introduction, a dummy's guide to neurodiversity. Oh, and I have to share one of my favorite chapters 
it's it's literally in the in the very start of the book it's called foolish assumptions don't assume that your brain isn't normal simply because of the way it thinks don't assume that being different doesn't bring challenges some parts of this book are written for specific groups such as parents teachers or neurodivergent individuals none of us are dummies you're reading this book to get a clear, jargon-free understanding of neurodiversity. We don't talk down to you. We are especially cautious because many of us grew up being called names for thinking differently. I hope that this video overall has given you a bit of a sense of, of what the book is like. And if you'd like to get it for yourself, well done again to John, Kushbu and Ranga. And for all the unnamed others who are no doubt indispensable in making this book a reality. It's really great to see such a practical, no-nonsense book answering everyday questions without the need to pathologize behavior. And it's no surprise that to create something like this requires a neuroinclusive team respecting the value and insights of lived experience. So I should probably leave it there. Thanks for watching. If you've already got a copy for yourself, I'm curious what you think, so please leave a comment and I'll see you again next week. Bye.